منو اللي يقول احنا ما نقدر نقدر 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 منو اللي يقول احنا ما نقدر والله نقدر منو اللي يقول احنا ما نقدر نقدر منو اللي يقول احنا ما نقدر بعزم اصرار وتحدي بنتخطى العقبات واحنا ما نقبل نكون على هامش الحياة بعزم اصرار وتحدي بنتخطى العقبات واحنا ما نقبل نكون على هامش الحياة ربنا خلقنا لغاية لغاية السلام عليكم انا محمد عاطف كنت طالب في المدرسة الأمريكية وكنت طالب باخد الـ EP classes الـ Advanced Placement خدت ثلاثة Advanced Placement classes كانوا الأحياء Biology و Chemistry وخدت EP Calculus EB وفي التالت الحمد لله خدت درجة عالية خدت الـ 5 اللي هي أعلى درجة ودلوقتي أنا طالب في كلية الطب في جامعة الشارقة هنا وطبعا تشرفت ان انا يبقى عندي الفرصه ان انا اقدر اطلع في البودكاست هنا اتكلم على التيبس اند تريكس ازاي ازاي تطلعوا وتنجحوا في الاي بي كلاسز وكده وكله بيبدا من عندك طبعا وان شاء الله كله يبقى خير اه هو الاي بي اكزام اللي هو اختصار ادفانس بليسمنت لو عارفين الاي جي سي اس اي اللي هو النظام البريطاني او الاي بي في حاجات قريبه زي الاي ليفلز وكده من الاخر هي آه كورسات آه عالية الجودة أو عالية المستوى للطلاب اللي عاوزين آه يدرسوا الحاجات اللي هيدرسوها في الجامعة من, من الهاي سكول بداية من, من المدرسة واللي بيحصل إيه الكورسات دي لما الواحد بياخدها ممكن يستفيد بها بطرق كتيرة سواء ممكن في جامعات بتطلب منك تاخد اي بي كلاسز في جامعات مش بتطلبها ممكن تحسن فرصة دخولك لل للجامعة لو انت قدمت لهم الاي بي كلاسز وكمان لو انت هتدرس في جامعة امريكية او في امريكا كندا تقدر تفيدك الاي بي كلاسز بان هي توفر لك كريدتس في الجامعة وممكن تخليك حتى لو درجتك حلوة ممكن تخليك تاخد يعني تم سكيب لشوية كورسز في الجامعة سواء احياء حاجة زي كده فده ممكن يفيدك بطرق كتيرة ولو الجامعة مش بترضى بيها آه ممكن تديك معلومات آه تفيدك في الجامعة في الكورسات اللي انت هتاخدها عامة وتخليك أعلى من الطلاب الباقيين آه الدراسة الـ AP exams بتكون بطرق كتيرة آه وتعتمد على الطالب آه في آه لكل طالب عامة في طريقة مختلفة إنك آه تذاكر بيها وتفهم آه وتفهم بيها المحتوى فـ آه طبعا آه شت فـ آه ال لكل طالب في طريقة عامة الواحد يقدر يدرس بيها وبتبقى أحسن من الشخص الآخر. في حاجة اتعلمنا عنها في الجامعة اسمها الفارك ميثودز اللي هي فيجوال أوديتوري ريدنج وكاينيسيتك. من الآخر الواحد بي كل واحد وممكن يبقى في ناس بيعرفوا يتعلموا أكتر أحسن من رؤيتهم للفيديوهات مثلا. في ناس بيتعلموا أحسن إن هم يعملوا سمر، في ناس بيتعلموا أحسن إن هم يتكلموا مع أصحابهم أو عائلاتهم ويعملوا لهم سمرايز أو كأنهم يدوا ميني لكتشر كده. فبتختلف من حد لحد، لكن لا أنصحه يعني إنك تعمل كومبينيشن، تعمل كومبينيشن ما بين الحاجات دي كلها. فمثلا أنا كان في الـ إحنا كان عندنا في الـ في الـ AP كلاس مش متأكد موجود عندكم دلوقتي ولا لأ، بس غالبا عندكم الموضوع الـ AP كلاس روم. فالاي بي كلاس روم ده بيبقى معاك كطالب اي بي معاك اكونت وبيديك فيديوهات من اساتذه هناك من امريكا يعني هم مجهزينها للطلاب والاسئله اللي بتيجي في الفيديوهات دي غالبا ما بتيجي في الامتحانات اسئله زيها توبك سيميلار وكده فانتوا خلوا بالكم يعني فالكولج بورد فيديوز مهمه جدا انا بقول لكم فادتني قوي يعني والاكسرسايزز اللي فيها حتى لما يقول لك يعني في في الفيديوهات مثلا هيوديك اكزامبل هو هيحله بنفسه وفي اكزامبل يقول لك جربه لوحدك لكن انا رايي تجرب الاثنين لوحدك في ثاني مره تتفرج بيها على الفيديو مثلا بعد فتره علشان كل ما الاكسرسايز اهم حاجه كل ما تحل اسئله اكتر كل ما انت هتفهم اكتر وهيبقى سهل عليك اكتر الامتحان 
هتبقى ليس ستريس في الامتحان ودي حاجه مهمه قوي الستريس بيضيع ناس كتير في الامتحان فالمهم اللي الواحد يعمله ان هو ما يقلقش من جواه في الامتحان وان هو ما يقلقش ازاي يتدرب اكتر فانت تتدرب على الاسئله تتفرج على فيديوهات في طرق كتيره ثانيه طبعا انك تقرا بعض الكتب يعني انا انا في كتاب مثلا استخدمته اللي هو بارونز كانت الجامعه المدرسه موفره لنا ولكن في كتب ثانيه ممكن الواحد يجيبها في بارونز اي بي ده مثلا مركز قوي على الديتيلز في ديتيلز مش هتيجي في الامتحان اصلا ومركز عليها يعني جيفز يو اندكس يعني انما في كتب ثانيه اللي هي في كتاب ثاني مثلا برينستون ريفيو ده موديك رؤيه سطحيه للمواضيع وديك اسئله وفي كتب زي كابلان وما الى ذلك في كتب كثيره. آه فالكتب مفيده الفيديوهات مفيده قوي خاصه الكولج بورد فيديوز لكن ممكن تتفرج على فان اكاديمي برضو لو في حاجه عاوز تعرف عنها اكتر. غير كده ممكن لنفسك يعني انك عشان تحفظ لازم تاخد نوتس دي حاجه مهمه قوي هتفيدك جدا بصراحه مش هتندم عليها انك تعمل نوتس تعمل نوت بوك سواء فيزيكال او ديجيتال زي ما انت عايز لكن تعمل نوتس وفي ابس كتيره تقدر تساعدك على ده سواء وورد نوتابيلتي جود نوتس في ابس كتيره تعمل فلاش كاردز دي مفيده برضو آه، تعمل سامريز آه، في حاجات كتيره تقدر تعملها طبعا للمذاكره فالريسورسز ار ليميتلس يعني لكن انا بالنسبه لي وانا في الكورس استخدمت فيديوهات الكوليدج بورد وفيديوهات من اكسترنال سورس من يوتيوب وكده زي خان اكاديمي كراش كورس حاجات زي كده استخدمت كتاب بارونز آه، وكتاب برينستون ريفيو واستخدمت كتاب ثانيه آه، واحده بارونز وبرينستون ريفيو وكتبت نوتس النوتس كتبت نوتس كتيرة ده كانت حاجة مهمة ومن وقت لوقت بحاول أشرح الكلام اللي أنا بدرسه لأهلي مثلا أو لأصحابي أو كجروب ستادينج حد زي كده عشان الحاجات دي بترسخ المعلومة في دماغك بالنسبة لل بالنسبة لل للسبجكتس هو بتعتمد بصراحة على الطالب عاوز يدخل مجال ايه في الجامعة ودي حاجة لازم الواحد يركز عليها عامة مثلا لو انا عاوز ادخل طب مثلا في حاجات بتفيدك اكتر من لو انت عاوز تدخل ارتس او تدخل ساينسز فبتختلف بصراحة مفيش حاجة ميجرلي ان كل حد يحتاج ياخدها علشان كل واحد بيستفيد بحاجة تانية فمثلا لو هتدخل روت ساينسز أو تدخل مثلا ميديسن أو تدخل بايو ميديكال انجينيرنج حاجة زي كده البيولوجي مفيد قوي ومش من أص... يعني على حد علمي مش من أصعب الكورسات البيولوجي يعني في ناس بيستصعبوه لكن اللي أنا شفته أنا وأصحابي اللي خدناه إن هو وعامة في كل الـ APs ناس بيفكروا إن الـ AP هيبقى صعب قوي لكن كدراسة دي يعني الناس ب... أقول نو no أوفر الناس بيقعدوا يقولوا إن هو صعب وهيتعب الواحد وكده هو هو طبعا المذاكره ليه ممكن تبقى ستريسفول ولكن ان جنرال اتس نوت از هارد از يو ثينك لو انت بتفكر فيها غالبا يعني uh, فبالنسبه لموضوع الاي بي الطالب ياخده زي ما انا قلت بتعتمد على اللي الطالب عاوزه فممكن واحد ياخد اي بي بيولوجي مثلا وده بيركز على البيولوجي 1 كورس اللي هو بيبقى في الجامعات عامه آه زي ايه مثلا بيركز على الفورمين كونسبت منهم الايفولوشن السيلز الخلايا التطور في في حاجات ثانيه برضو زي مش بيركز على الهيومن سيستمز قوي يعني مش بيركز على الاناتومي قوي ولكن ممكن يركز لك زي ما قلت على الموليكيولز مثلا الميه الانزيمز السيلولار بروسيسز حاجه كده بالنسبة للكيمياء بيركز على الفيزيكال كيمستري أكتر فلو عاوز تدخل هندسة مثلا هندسة متعلق حاجة متعلقة بالكيمياء الكيمياء ممكن يفيدك بيركز على الرياكشن كاينتكس أنواع التفاعلات والرياكشنز وما إلى ذلك بيركز على حاجات كتيرة من الحاجات دي حاجات ثيوريتيكال كتير احنا بالنسبة لنا للأسف في ال... احنا يعني كنا دفعة كل كورونا من الآخر ما قدرناش نروح المعمل كتير ولكن أنا واثق يعني إن الإكسبيرينس في المعمل تبقى مفيدة أوي حاجات زي التايتريشن وحاجات زي كده تبقى حاجات ممتعة وأنا دلوقتي كطالب في جامعة بدرس نفس الحاجات دي دلوقتي في الكيمياء فالحاجات دي مفيدة أوي للجامعة برضه ففي بقى اللي أنا خدته يعني بيولوجي وكيمستري وكالكولاس أي بي 
دول مفيدين لو عاوز تدخل طب الكالكولاس يعني كايند اوف من ناحيه الطب ولكن الكالكولاس ان جنرال اصل الكالكولاس مفيد لو هتدخل اي حاجه علميه عامه بعيد عن البيزنس عشان هو حتى لو ما درستوش في الجامعه بيدي سوليد بيزس كده مهمه طلاب مدارس تانيين بيدرسوها برضو في كل مكان يعني فان يبقى عندك الكالكولاس ده اندر يور بيلت من الاخر من ناحيه ال السي في بتاعتك بيبقى حاجه حلوه ان هي معلومات مهمه يعني فالكيمستري اه الكيمستري مفيد بتاع الشات الكيمستري مفيد اه لو بتدخل ميديسن تدخل بايو ميديكال انجينيرنج ما الى ذلك الساينسز يعني ممكن انجينيرنج حتى فبتعتمد زي ما قلت في انجلش لانجوج لو عاوز تدخل لينجوستكس ده مفيد في ال في في حاجات متعلقه بالارتس في حاجات متعلقه بال باللغات في حاجات متعلقه بالفيزكس والفيزكس في كذا اي بي فيزكس على حسب عاوز تدخل الكتريكال انجينيرنج كمبيوتر انجينيرنج في حاجات كتيره ممكن الواحد على حسب المدرسه بتوفره طبعا فتعتمد على الشخص وايه التخصص اللي عاوز يدخله من الاخر الكورسات نفسها يعني الاكزامز اكسباير هي الفعاليتها بتقعد لمدة طويلة على فكرة يعني ما تقلقوش من الموضوع ده هو انت لما بتقدم في الجامعة بتفضل معاك لمدة يعني فكلمة اكسباير بصراحة انا مش متأكد من الموضوع قوي ولكن ان جنرال يعني الامتحانات بتقعد معاك فترة يعني مثلا في اوبشن فتحوا لك في ال في التقديم انه عاوز تقدم السكورز بتاعتك فين ممكن تقدمها للميديكال سكولز في امريكا الميديكال سكولز في امريكا بتبقى لازم تاخد ماكسيمم حوالي اربع سنين باتشلرز قبل ما تدخل الميديكال سكول ده حاجه مثلا ف يعني على الاقل اربع سنين مثلا فانا بقول لا المهم تبعتها وخلاص للمكان اللي انت عاوزه ف يعني ذاتس ماي ريسبونس السات آه السات مختلف عن الاي بيز من نواحي كتير السات تحتاجوا انك تدخل اي جامعه عامه آه في امريكا او كده معظم الجامعات ان جنرال يعني في امريكا كندا آه في بعض الدول الثانيه برضو انا سمعت ان في بعد ما انا اتخرجت يعني كان في آه اجراء تاني الموضوع السات نوت ابليكابل لبعض الجامعات هنا وده كويس يعني لكن ان جنرال السات يبقى اللي هو كوليدج ابتيتيود تيست من الاخر يعني بيشوفوا بيشوفوا قدراتك ان جنرال في معلومات مش لازم تحفظها او تفهمها اكتر من انك لازم يعني يبقى عندك سكيلز في الريدنج في الماس كده فالسات انت بتعمل له براكتس ماشي الاي بي بتعمل له براكتس لكن بتذاكر له في نفس الوقت يعني الاي بي آه ماده كانك بتاخده ماده في المدرسه فعندك كريكولم عندك آه الشابترز عندك الحاجات دي كلها عندك تذاكر من كتاب كل الشبورد نفسها مش يعني مش بيوفروا الريسورسز كتيره بعيد عن الاي بي كلاس روم ففي ثيرد بارتي ريسورسز برضو يعني من زي ما نوت بارونز و و برينستون ريفيو كابلان وكده لكن ان جنرال يعني السات بيبقى براكتس ميجرلي براكتسنج فور ذا كويز عشان الكويز الا في الماس ممكن يبقى في شويه حاجات ان جنرال بتعرف يعني كانها دروس بتفهمها ولكن من ناحيه الاي بي ده فول كورس كانه كوليدج كورس بتاخد ماده بالسبجكت بتاعتها بالهوم وركس بتاعتها بالاساينمنتس بالتيست بكل حاجه فده الفرق يعني في الامتحان نفسه الاثنين يعني على وقتنا يعني كان سكانترون شيتس انا عارف ان السات بتاعي من السنه الجايه هيخلوه ديجيتال فولي ديجيتال دي حاجه حلوه طبعا آه ولكن هو ان جنرال يعني السات والاي بي في نفس يعني في طريقه الاسئله وكده قريبين ولكن في فرق كبير ما بين السات وال يعني ان هم مالتيبل تشويس لكن في فرق كبير ما بين السات والاي بي ان الاي بي في حاجه اسمها فري فري ريسبونس كويشنز اف ار كيوز ودي انت بتكتب بيها وممكن ترسم حتى تشارتس وكده بتكتب ورقه او قلم السات ما فيهوش الكلام ده فدي ده فرق كبير يعني بيشوفوا في ناس اساتذه وكده بيشوفوا الاجوبه بتاعتك وبيجاوبوها بيعملوا لها كوركت مانيوال برضه في الحاجات دي هو كمان في فرق بين السات والاي بي ان السات بيتكلم على اربع مهارات اساسيه 
اللي هي الهارت اوف الجبرا جيومتري ستاتستكس وبروبلم سولفينج تمام الاي بي هو كورس متخصص سبيشاليزد كورس سواء اي بي كالكولس اي بي اي بي فيزكس وات ايفر فان انتروداكشن تو اي بي كلاسز So um, what we talked about today or what we'll be talking about more in depth is um, what are AP classes and why you should take them, how should you study for them, how should you manage your time and stress in general, preparing for the exam and tips and tricks uh, to follow during the um, test. So what are AP classes? As we discussed earlier, AP classes are college level courses and uh, they provide students with um, with the necessary prerequisite information or uh, requirements that allow them to develop a skill set and a powerful CV that um, aids them in college. And that may be directly through admissions or indirectly through learning the courses themselves and them aiding you in future college courses. So why should you take uh, AP classes? It's first of all to strengthen your uh, CV or college admission in general. Uh, some colleges, especially in the UK, require uh, AP exams. So if you are going there uh, for medicine, for example, they need you to take at least three AP exams with certain scores and such. So it, they can be used to satisfy prerequisite requirements. Um, they provide helpful essential knowledge. Um, so in case your college doesn't accept AP classes, they will still be helpful towards you. That's the case for me, actually. Uh, my university didn't. Uh, accept AP classes so uh, but however they did help us uh, or the AP classes did help us in gathering information uh, that um, was found in the courses we took at university so when I took uh, for example human biology in university and the general chemistry uh, I found that some of the things I took in AP uh, were also covered there so it gave me a head start sort to of say Um, and then they help you in certain colleges attain credits, perhaps scholarships even, and probably skip uh, entire college courses um, if you go get a required grade, which is usually a four or a five or even a three for some colleges. So how should you study? Um, as we have mentioned, uh, we study by watching videos from AP Classroom uh, generally. That's the most important one. Fan Academy and Crash Course are also some good alternatives. Uh, there is also um, the, that, uh, the, the fact that you need to read the books because they provide some essential information that are su just summarized in the videos. So Baron's textbooks, as I said, they are too comprehensive, uh, but they will cover you safely uh, and well. In terms of the Princeton Review box, they are more summarized, they are more brief, Um, but I would say they give you um, um, enough information to advance in the topic. And then there are Kaplan uh, books, of course, with exercises and such. You could create mind maps while studying to strengthen or to actually uh, withhold the idea in your brain. Um, and mind maps actually help a lot, especially if you are... Um, Um, like uh, God forbid for uh, cramming before the exam which is something you should never do but in general mind maps help a lot so there is diagram.net which is a free uh, website you could make some mind maps on and then there is Canva and MindNode other uh, software so of course you could use you could prepare flashcards through Quizlet, Quizlet Anki, Anki app etc and flashcards would be helpful in a multitude of subject is, uh, subjects especially biology because there are some terms you need to memorize, not necessarily understand. Um, that's the way life goes. <laughs> so um, you need to prepare flashcards for these. And it would be nice if they were portable so you could go and study them wherever you want. You should take notes, take notes, take notes, and take notes. That's the most important thing. Taking notes is really crucial uh, to solidify your understanding of the topics. So I use Microsoft Word, now I use Notability or Notion, whatever, whatever you use, just use something um, um, and take notes, even if it's physical notes, because everyone does that, of course. And then there is practicing questions, which is also as important, uh, if not more than taking notes. Uh, and there are multiple places where you could practice for questions, including AP Classroom, 
which includes the videos and previous AP exams. It's really important to use previous AP exams to your advantage because a lot of questions, and I've seen them, uh, get repeated in another way or with another value. They barely change them. So it's like a question bank and they are free online. And then there's Khan Academy and other uh, sources for questions. How can you manage? Uh, as I always try to say, study smart, don't study hard. Or mm, you could do both. But I mean, studying smart is the key because some people study for hours and hours and hours a day, six, seven, eight hours a day and get lower grades than some people who, talk three, uh, who study for only three hours a day even. So it's really important to know what um, uh, sticks with you, what is them, in what um, study methods become helpful for you. And this will allow you to study smarter and attain information more efficiently. You need to organize your life in general, even uh, exercise, workout, uh, read books. Don't make APs your full uh, time work <laughs> because that would be too exhausting. Instead, try to organize your life around every aspect you generally do with. Um, and that would help you in APs as well. Believe it or not, it will help you relieve your stress which is helpful. Um, you, get, you need to know what type of learner you are. Um, most people can learn in a multitude of ways, but again, uh, it, as I said previously, it differs from one person to another, how well you could consume information and, um, um, and what ways you could consume, consume information with. Utilize all the resources you have and uh, try to revise with family and friends every now and then. So uh, we have an, uh, another slide here. How do I prepare for the big day, for the exam in general? I know that's a bit far ahead for now, for some of you, but still uh, it's important to know just to uh, have some information because that's an important question. So try not to be unrealistic. So for example, um, if you have studied for uh, two days before the exam, God forbid, because I, I hope no one does that. <laughs> but anyways, if you have studied only two days before the exam, you don't know what to do, don't be unrealistic, okay? Uh, you need to uh, accept the truth. You know, Yanni, uh, it, that will help you in relieving stress, actually. Because if you uh, know what you have studied, you are comfortable with yourself, you know what, what to aim for, then it will be good for you. And also wish for the best, uh, pray, for, uh, pray for yourself, let your family pray for you. Uh, don't make a lot of last minute revisions and decisions. Uh, try to focus on mindfulness during the exam day. So don't necessarily open the book during exam day and before the exam was five minutes, just uh, speed run the book. No, don't do that. You just need to be mindful in the day of the exam. Get yourself a cup of tea. I don't recommend coffee because it raises heart rate, actually. So uh, don't drink coffee, but drink a cup of tea. Uh, have, a, um, have a nice chat. Enjoy your life, etc. Because um, preparing for the exam uh, has taken a long time already. So don't, uh, don't tire yourself in the last day. Uh, try to have everything at hand. Like your calculators, your... Um, your uh, number two pencils, um, your re or every resource you need. Believe it or not, some people have forgotten their calculators uh, at the exam day and they have had some terrible consequences. <laughs> so don't do that. Please be sure to check yourself. Have some breathing exercises which are important for um, stress relieving. Try to meditate by, by whatever way you want to meditate with. And avoiding avoid stress because the more you are stressed in the exam, believe it or not, the, uh, the more you will uh, do worse actually. So uh, perhaps have a song playing in the background, not in the exam, of course, but while you are studying, if you can focus with that. Uh, what I did in my SAT exam was actually when I was stressed, my mind started automatically playing some Frank Sinatra music for some reason. Uh, I did focus in the exam, of course, and got a good grade, but. Uh, try to uh, see what makes you calmer and do it. Uh, and after the exam, try not to check your answers with your friends, especially during the exam, because that's terrible and it's considered cheating, but after the exam also. Because um, 
it could cause you uh, disappointment or excitement, which may be unnecessary because they could be wrong, you could be wrong, anyone could be wrong for that case. So don't uh, overwhelm yourself with that. Finally, some text, uh, tips and tricks. Um, use up, uh, these are some uh, things you could uh, use your, to your advantage. You, uh, of course, take everything step by step. Don't overwhelm yourself with everything, but you could use things like the Pomodoro method, which is basically, um, let's say, 60 minutes studying, uh, 15 minutes break or 10 minutes break. 60 minutes studying, 10 minutes break four times and then have a longer break. You can read about it. It's actually really good. There are some apps that help with that. I guess there's an app called Forest. I've been using since high school until now in college. It's really helpful. And uh, not, uh, not advertising or anything, just saying things that help me. Uh, flashcards, as I've mentioned. Cor Cornell Notes is a form of note-taking, which may be helpful for some of you. Uh, it's, uh, it's actually indicated in quite a lot of books uh, because it was developed in Cornell University by a professor there. So it's a great note-taking um, uh, technique. There are VARC profiles, which is, uh, uh, as I mentioned, some... Uh, methods you could use to, um, um, or actually work profiles are, um, they show you the techniques that would be better for you to study. So there are people who study, like to study visually through watching videos, aud uh, auditory, who like to listen to podcasts, for example. Uh, welcome to the podcast, by the way. Uh, um, in By reading books for R and K for kinesthetic, which is basically doing experimentation, etc. Highlight whenever you are taking, highlight your notes and the book, okay, do both, because highlighting, uh, especially with different colors, have different colors of highlighters, for definitions, a blue color, for crucial information, a yellow color, whatever, it it makes studying more active, active studying is more, it's very important for APs, it's more important than passive studying, passive studying uh, won't help you in college or APs, it's an old thing now, so leave that behind in the past, and actually focus on active studying by these methods and other methods. You could devise methods yourself. Uh, summarize the information you get every now and then. Whenever you have a chance to summarize, summarize what uh, you have uh, written. Incentives, well, uh, uh, if you have a chance to do it, then sure, I guess. But, uh, if you could um, uh, promise yourself, uh, if, if I will do well in the exam, Perhaps uh, I'll get myself a new PlayStation or a new headphones or a new whatever you want. Okay, so try to incentivize learning. That's actually a really uh, good method, um, at least in my opinion, that makes you uh, compelled to work. So if you promise yourself something good, uh, because uh, after you finish the test, even if you didn't do that well, but just to make yourself feel good, to, it would incentivize you to continue. And finally, most importantly, don't cram, never cram. Cramming is the enemy of success. Never do it because cramming um, eventually stresses you out, which is, which as I said, a multi a multiple times uh, is uh, the worst thing that could happen. Cramming uh, allows you to get information less efficiently, less effectively. Everything bad happens from cramming. So please don't cram. And I should give my uh, this advice to a lot of people as well um, that I know. <laughs> so that's the end of the presentation. I hope you have liked it. Um, and thanks for getting me to this podcast. Of course, it's, it's really great. Yes, so uh, can you tell us about your daily plan school in school and weekends? What are you doing in the school and after the school? Um, <clears throat> Well, uh, actually, having a daily plan uh, is, is really good for productivity. Um, personally, um, I just went to the flow, to be honest. Uh, I would recommend having a daily plan, uh, which is really important. But generally, um, try to have it flexible as well. Like, don't put it... Um, I realize, at least, for that for most people, if you have uh, your schedule at at six o'clock, you will start studying from this to this. At four o'clock, you will do this. At, this would be too strict and it would often um, hinder your studying, not actually improve it. So what I would recommend actually is to um, have a specific, uh, not really have a specific timeline, but to uh, dedicate um, um, like a number of hours for each activity. 
don't say when just know that you will eventually do it in the or, or in the day so once you come home uh, from school you can uh, uh, of course focus in school in your work uh, in the subjects all subjects not APs only focus in everything when you go home just have a small break to relax from school uh, eat your lunch talk with your family a little bit that's really important and then you can actually uh, start studying so um, during school if i came back home at two for example i would start generally studying at four thirty, believe it or not so from then you could have uh, as i said use uh, the pomodoro method or actually um, um like a space technique of studying so don't study all at once don't study six hours at once in one setting try to study uh, for example, um, 45 minutes and have a 15 minutes break. 45 minutes, 15 minutes break. Do it like four times or three times and then have a longer break, maybe half an hour to one hour and then start again. So in total, you will study for more than four hours a day, preferably like four or five hours a day, um, which if you keep consistent with, uh, would make you uh, more than well equipped to tackle the AP exams, actually. So um, just don't overstress yourself with a daily schedule and a daily plan. Just know what you need to do at the end. Have a to-do list. A to-do list is really helpful, actually. Um, and just say, today I'll do this for this amount of time, this for this amount of time, and do it. Of course, being... Um, um, being having a schedule is great and all, but if having a schedule would hinder your workflow, would make you too stressed, would make you uh, perhaps uh, feel more lazy, believe it or not, some people have this problem, then you need to work around it. Uh, instead, make a to-do list, um, etc. But just know when to do what, or actually for, for how long to do what. Yeah, that's a better way to do it, uh, to put it. How many hours have I studied daily for the AP subjects? Um, it's much like university, actually. I study um, four to yeah, max a maximum of five hours a day. If there is no quiz or test, of course, before the exam. But three to four hours a day, um, if you are stretching it out a bit too much, it would be five. But uh, in general, um, as I said, three hours, four hours, that would be great if you keep it up. So if you keep it up every day, you wouldn't fall behind too much, three to three to four hours a day. Because uh, as I said, like some people actually study six, seven, eight hours a day, uh, every day, and then get lower grades, okay? And that's a pretty unfortunate thing to happen. Um, but uh, the key is not about how much you study. The key is about how well you study. Um, what methods do you use to study? Um, so some people read for six hours a day. Some people... Um, uh, read for an hour, summarize what they read for the next hour or two, and then watch a video about the topic while eating. Uh, for example, uh, uh, while I'm eating lunch or dinner, I cannot focus very well on studying. So what I do instead is watch a video. Uh, watch a video um, from, um, from Crash Course or AP Daily, whatever. Of course, not every, not every time you do that, you will still have a life. You are a human. After all, you need to uh, rest every now and then but yes um, three to four hours a day I would say would be enough if you know uh, how to study well for it like if you uh, figure out your the best um, studying techniques that actually um, solidifies the knowledge in your mind so yeah that would be my response and what is my <laughs> my advice for teachers uh, <laughs> I think that would be, <laughs> uh, that's too far ahead for me. But if I say an advice for teachers who teach AP courses, you know what the best thing about any teacher would be? Uh, what makes me, uh, or what made me love my teachers a lot um, is to be passionate about the subject. Uh, for teachers who teach AP courses, um, or for any teachers in general, if you show to your students that you are passionate about the subject, the, real, the good students, the students who care, will actually 
love the subject a million times and would excel, excel in it. So um, without mentioning names, of course, I, have, I knew a lot of teachers who did this well. And believe it or not, they made me change my mind in a lot of things. For example, I have my astronomy professor in university right now. Uh, he's amazing. He, he's actually making me think again. Why, why did I enter medicine? I should have entered astrophysics or astronomy. So be that kind of teacher. Um, it's not necessarily about providing um, 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 the strictest um, teaching methods or such. Uh, provide your students with fun activities. Uh, make the learning process actually uh, fun. And um, I wouldn't say childlike because that's a different uh, uh, term. But what I would say is uh, follow the pedagogy method, which is uh, the uh, adult teaching, basically, which um, you do not feed that student's information for memorization. And that's what most schools are doing nowadays. Instead, you need to make them research for themselves, make them love the topic, because when they research the information themselves, they will actually benefit much more and the information will stick to their mind better. That's what research uh, says nowadays. So try to develop this um, uh, love for research in your students, because it will help them in university as well. Uh, let them um, figure out how the world works in the scope of the course and outside of the scope, actually, because it... Um, Try to not limit yourself to the scope of the course all the time. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I would say entertain your students while teaching them. Because um, in general, if students are having a boring lecture, they wouldn't get a lot of information. Um, and that's uh, actually a pretty important thing. So have your students enjoy the topic, make them enjoy researching and to research a lot. Uh, the pedagogy method, as I said, let them... Um, um, self-learn and be their guidance um, entertain them in the class give them fun activities and explore what's beyond the topic because that's really important for future uh, for their future as well uh, for the AP exam and beyond it um, so we are taking the AP exam for college after all and uh, to develop our knowledge and uh, uh, developing the next steps is important as well uh, you already got five in all subjects. Why haven't you joined a scholar? Why haven't you got a scholarship or or and joined the university charge? Uh, well, actually, it's a it's a pretty complicated thing. So, um, the universities that accept AP classes um, um, differ around the world. Okay, so for my case, I wanted to stay in the United Arab Emirates with my family and study medicine. And um, there aren't much uh, universities that actually uh, would benefit you with AP classes and at the same time um, offer you medicine. So, for example, there, is, uh, there are a lot of universities, actually, really great universities. But for the University of Sharjah, which is really great, as I said, they don't accept AP classes, sadly, until now. Hopefully, that will change in the future. But uh, for the, um, And it's not an American university, so... Uh, that's another thing. However, what I found really, uh, really actually uh, um, uh, comforting about this fact is that what I, what I learned in the AP classes, so what I learned in AP Bio, in AP Chemistry, uh, and even some things in AP Calculus, they have helped me in college courses because they have provided me with the essential background some, some students actually lacked. So it gave me a head start in these aspects. So yeah, with that uh, being said, it's because my choice didn't allow me to necessarily uh, go to a university that accepts APs. However, I know a lot of you, the majority of you would actually go to universities or courses or colleges that would accept APs and benefit you from it. And even if you uh, end up like me, it would still uh, benefit you nonetheless with the courses in college. And actually, I have gotten a scholarship from the university. It's a high school discount. So universities, even if you do well in APs, uh, in your report card at least, without the AP college board exam, they could still benefit you because I did well in my report card. So they gave me a 50% discount anyways. So yeah, it actually works. Yeah. Uh, so you know, 
shouldn't um, worry yourself a lot about it because either way you will inshallah be uh, ben you will benefit from it. And um, you could also send your uh, your scores to other universities of interest. Uh, like I sent my score to Harvard Medical School, uh, which is still far ahead. But I mean, uh, if you would like to have a, to for a university to have a record of you, so one day you could go there and see it for yourself. You could send your score. You have one free send of a score actually, so you could do that. Yes, and about being afraid, uh, about being afraid uh, for the test. Actually, I would say, to be honest, everyone in my batch was afraid to have the test. And believe it or not, uh, they didn't uh, like after they took the after they took the course, they didn't see it as bad as others made it appear to be. Okay, if that makes sense. So um, my advice is to to formulate your own opinion. Just take the course yourself, because if you hear the opinion of others in that regard, of course you can hear them, but uh, if you won't really know for yourself unless you try it. So I was extremely worried about the tests, actually. Uh, I had a lot of trouble stressing and such. But when I actually took the courses and understood what's given, what's given the materials and such, uh, it was much less stressful and less frightening as a, uh, compared to what I have expected. So generally people, uh, especially with AP classes, people um, overestimate or actually, how can I say it? They, um, they describe it with over-the-top adjectives, I would say. Because, um, uh, you know, you will find a lot of people who would like, uh, in life in general, who would like you to... Um, to not undergo, uh, let's say, something that's hard, that they think is hard, um, but uh, even if they were successful at it. So don't look by this perspective. Instead, try to focus on um, actually trying it for yourself and formulating your own opinion. Um, and it's a good challenge in general. Even if it, you find it challenging, it's um, it will prepare you very well for college because college stress is a whole another like a whole other level. So if you actually take these AP classes, you're actually training yourself. So even if you get stressed, there is a positive side to that uh, formula uh, because you will know what to look forward to in college because these AP classes are basic college courses in high school. That's the basic uh, thing of it and the basic notion behind. It. So yeah, uh, either way, it's a positive thing. Don't worry about it. I believe that's it. Uh, thank you so much for uh, having me with you today. It has been a great honor, to be honest. Um, I would like, like to pass the torch to the next generation of uh, 12th grade students. I would like to, uh, like, uh, I really wish to see, like, our students from everywhere excel at the topics because science and uh, studying in general is a very, very crucial topic, researching, etc. It's, um, it's a method uh, by which people rise and go to, um, not necessarily fame, but to have a successful and happy life in the future. So that's a really important thing to keep in mind. Uh, try to always be curious, always think, uh, don't make one uh, bad grade ruin your whole day. Um, like, just make everything count. Um, and know that whenever you learn something new, you could potentially use this new information to help yourself or others. And that's what all humanity is about. It's about helping each other. So keep that in mind and uh, keep being curious. Thanks for having me. Uh, it was really great, to be honest.